Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I want to show you my favourite Southern Thai Khao Geng curry rice shop in the whole of Bangkok, if not the whole of Thailand. Bold claims I know, but this place is truly exceptional. We're way out west at MRT Petkasem Sisip Bed, Petkasem 48, and after we finish up this amazing curry feast, we're going to be hitting up one of my favourite coffee shops in the area. Let's go. So there are literally dozens of curries to try here. Musa Sikong. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we got a pork southern pork rib curry. Yeah. Oh, smells good. Look Liang. Look Liang Mu. Gai, gai, okay. So we've got they're kinda like sato, but they're not sato. Pao. Pao. You know pao. Oh tuna. Oh cup? And the more one. Yeah. Yeah? More one. Oh, it smells so good. Keng Tai Pa. Okay. Keng Tai Pa. So this is the fish organ soup. Yeah. Uh, some Falang don't like the smell. Yeah, very chili. Oh, chili or chili? Yeah. Everyone's favourite. Every Falang loves this one. <laughs> falang chop. <laughs> Keng Tai Po. Yeah. Keng Tai Po Sai Sapalod. Pak Bung. Pak Bung. Ni Sapalod ma. Ni. Ni Aloy na. Keng som. Keng som. Keng som alaina. Pakruam malaga. Pakruam malaga. Yes. So we've got papaya. Yeah. Papaya. Okay. And papaya. Mm. Then this one. And nomai. Nomai. Nomai is bamboo. Oh, bamboo. So we got <laughs> nomai. We got bamboo. Ani kuakling. Kuakling. Mu. Kuakling mu. Yeah. So this is the one we had the other day at the market, guys. Okay. This is the. So the fried one, uh, panang alaina. Panang mo and genkile, cassia leaf curry. So we're gonna get a little mixture of all. So they got people on. This is the oh, this is the boss. Jiao kong kong, jiao kong kap. Alai alai ti sud. Good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's big born is getting me everything. Yeah. Come, come. And then we have uh, <laughs> over here. You can help yourself to some nampikapi. Aloina, come in, come on. Nong sao, come in. Well, so her daughter's made this. Open cup. This. You don't always, the governor's not always in here, so like, I've been very lucky today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So they're like almost like stink beans with a uh, chicken in a southern Thai curry paste. Geng Tepo, which is the morning glory curry, but I've actually got mine with pineapple in it, which is quite rare. It's a coconut milk based red curry. Loads of spices. The keylet curry, so this is cassia leaf curry, but you've also got the buds, so we've got met keylet. Met keylet. And uh, some fish, I'm not sure what fish this is. Uh, could be pato or something like that, like it looks kind of like a mackerel. So, sikong mo. So, sikong is ribs, so this is a southern pork rib curry, one of the most famous pork rib curry is imaginable, looks red hot, loads of caviar lime leaves, no coconut milk, so it's very, very spicy. You've got some whole green chilies in there, You've got those lovely ribs. Oh, smells amazing, guys. And then if you follow my channel, you'll know one of my all-time favorites, Kua Kling, the dry mincemeat curry, southern Thai curry paste, lime leaves, and sliced garlic in this one. All right, let's get some of this wonderful pork curry onto the rice. Some of that beautiful, look how spiced that is. Curry. Over the top. I'm just gonna go all the way around here, guys. I'm gonna put a little bit on each side of the plate. Some of that kua kling. Some of 
some of the Ging Te Po. And this is actually probably my favorite curry in here, I'll be honest. I mean, it's all pretty good, but this is just so, so good. And last but not least, the Luk Liang. So again, it's a dry, like the Kua Kling, it's a dry fried southern dish. Okay. The only one I'm not going to put on is the Key Lek, because sometimes it's a bit fishy for me. So I'm going to try this first, and then we'll go from there. Right, let's see how soft these ribs are. Literally just flaked the meat off those spare ribs. Right, so I've got some of the pork rib, got some of the chili, I've got a whole green chili. That is so, so tender. Very, 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 very spicy. Mm. You can just chew the meat straight off of the spare rib. Very, very heavy, deep flavor. Loads and loads of turmeric, loads of chili, lemongrass, lime leaves. I'm pretty sure there's a mix of dried and fresh chilies in here. And I'm getting pepper as well, so there's like different levels, different layers of heat. That is exceptional. Mm. Right, I'm going to go round in a circle. Next, I'm going to try the Kua Kling, which is the dry minced meat curry. Now, in here, they've hand minced the meat, which is the traditional way of doing things. Again, it's that southern Thai curry paste, so fresh and dried chilies. That's, that's the common theme throughout all these dishes, is that unique southern Thai paste and then it's just what they do with it whether they add coconut milk like in the Ging Teh Po or they just use water in the Si Kong Mu or you know they just fry it dry or kua in the Luk Liang and the Kua Kling. It's salty but then you've got citrus from the from the lime leaves and that lemongrass. There's, the flavour is insane on both of those. Right next up I'm going to try the Ging Teh Po. So I love this dish so much because it's the sweet pineapple against the sour tart curry. Now usually their Geng Te Po is soured with either makam, which is tamarind, makut, which is like a knobbly, gnarly looking lime where you get lime leaves from, or manau. She uses all three, so it's like, again, it's like a flavor explosion, feast for the senses. So much going on in every curry, and this is so much different from the Seacock Mo because of the use of coconut milk, and it's got a different pace. This is closer to what you'd have uh, in Geng Ped, like a red curry. Mm. Always my favorite in here. Okay, next up, I'm going to try the Luk Liang Gai, and this is fried like the Kua Kling, dry, it's slightly more oily than the Kua Kling but still using that southern curry paste. Gapi, which is shrimp paste, and these little beans that are kind of like sator, but not. I thought they were baby sator beans when I first had them, but that is something else. I'm blown away. Okay, last up I'm going with the Genki Lek. Again, it's a coconut-based curry. Very, very interesting. It's quite, it's very fishy from the fish. It's like an oily mackerel kind of fish. It's nice. But the most interesting thing are these little buds. Because most of the time you'll see this just with the leaves, the cassia leaves, the kilek leaves, and maybe a couple of buds. The buds have the consistency of uh, mung dao, so like unhold dao. And um, you know, it tastes like a legume. It's a very interesting dish. It's a little overpowering for me. It tastes a little bit like geng tai pa. It tastes like that kind of thing, like very, very fishy. But it's not bad. Not bad, it ain't really my thing, but it's interesting. Okay, so I did a video in a southern Thai restaurant in Panok near Wanglang, and everyone has commented, all my Thai subscribers have commented, like, eat those vegetables. How are you eating all these curries and spicy food without freshening it up with the vegetables? That's what these vegetables are here for, because the food is so salty and so spicy, you need something fresh and crisp just to sort of balance everything out. We've got some holapa 
which is Thai basil. We've got some pak chi, which is coriander or cilantro. Stop doing that American accent, Gary. Cabbage, makua, which is aubergine, eggplant, cucumber, and some green beans. And then we've got this nampikapi, which is shrimp paste, chili, lime juice, sugar, little dip you get with all Southern Thai food. Oh, I love it. When I did that last video, of course I ate the vegetables and the herbs, because I absolutely love fresh herbs, especially hola pa, which is Thai basil, but I didn't put it in the video because I thought it was just a bit boring, but no, apparently all my Thai viewers want to see me eating my five a day. Right, so last up, I'm going to try this nampikapi that her daughter made. I could just eat this on rice. Delicious. Shrimp paste, lime, chilies, garlic. So, so good. So, so good. Yeah, I could eat that all day just on some rice, which I'm going to do now. And I don't care if this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. So I've probably been in here 20 times. I'm always amazed at how good this place is. Because I leave it so long in between trips, I forget how good it is. I always come in, there's always something new on the menu. There's always something different to try. That bon is so friendly, so nice, so accommodating. And they've been here 18 years, 14 in this shop. So if you've had a shop open for that long, that's this busy every day, uh, even during COVID, uh, when it was really bad here, you are doing something right. So come on down. It's a great place, as I said, to just come down and learn about a few different dishes. If Papon is here, she does speak a little bit of English and her daughter speaks perfect English. If they're here, you're in luck. If not, just point at what you want. Okay, price-wise, a little bowl like this, 40 baht for one. That's just over a dollar, less than a pound for a small bowl. 60 baht, that's a dollar 80, one pound 50 for a bigger bowl. If you want it rad cow, so on rice, you can pick two for 50 baht or three scoops of curry for 60 baht, okay? Absolute bargain. As I said, super, super friendly. Really easy to get to now. Get off at 48 and walk up. You'll know 48 if you saw my video on Bangwa Kamu, the Khao Kamu shop, which is absolutely incredible. And we're actually gonna go back there now and I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite little coffee shops in the area to finish off the video. I'm gonna say goodbye, I'm gonna get the bill and then off to the next one. So I don't know if you saw my dim sum video, that's just at the next stop, that's at Bangwa, BTS and MRT stations. So if you wanted like a real deal, Southern Thai breakfast experience, you could go here, then go to the dim sum, or go to the dim sum, then go to the curry rice shop, because this is like classic Surat Thani Nakhon Si Tamarat breakfast feast. So you come down the stairs of Pekasem Sisi Pen, and it's just a little tiny coffee shop tucked down by a condo block. And this is what we're going for today. We're going to get the whiskey. Betsy Parman. They've got all different ones for you to choose from. They've got a Chiang Mai blend. They've got loads. They've got, look, different for black, different for latte. Very small little shop. But well, before anyone says it's expensive, look, you can get a latte, just standard latte, Thai beans from Chiang Rai, 40 baht, see si baht. Our latte on whiskey, no? Oh, here. Okay, So you can sit down here if you want. I've got a little chair, a little stool, but I prefer to sit outside with my, with my dog. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so I've got my whiskey. It's a good looking cup, guys. And it's a big cup for 85 baht as well. I'm gonna perch myself where I belong by the bitter melons on this little bench. So it's just a little tiny coffee shop. You wouldn't think much of it, just outside the MRT station. And I know this place just because it's next to Kamu Bangwa, uh, the Khao Kamu place that I did a video at. So I've known it for years. She's always got different types of beans in there. At the moment, today is the most unique Thai bean I've ever drunk, I think. Um, it's called whiskey and that is because it tastes like, well, whiskey or rum. It's kind of fruity as well, so it tastes like, it definitely tastes like a spirit. It tastes like maybe rum and raisin would be a better analogy for it, but I had something similar at 
Sun Time in Siracha with Arthur, and I had something similar by Chulalongkorn University the other day. Um, but honestly, one of the most unique blends I've had in Thailand. Around two pounds a cup, uh, $2.55, something like that. And it's worth every penny. Uh, you wouldn't even be able to get this in England, let alone me telling you how much it would cost. It's a big cup as well, it's, it's, a, it's a double. But yeah, very, very nice. You wouldn't even notice this place, tiny, un unassuming little coffee shop. Really, really good. Part of my morning routine, I stop here and get a coffee every day while I'm on the hunt for decent, authentic street food in the area, of which there is plenty. This area is amazing for street food. The MRT's here now, so just get down here and check the place out for yourself. I've just spotted my favorite street dog, probably of all time, so I'm gonna call her over now, I'll spend a bit of time with her. You know what? I'm gonna let her see you out of the video. <laughs> That's my girl. How you doing, champ? I haven't seen you for a few days, you alright? You good? Say so what the cup? Say like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.